Okay, so real quick, <clears throat> real quick before we get into today's episode, week 26 with creator and host of the Alchemist Library podcast, Ryan Ayala. Uh, this episode was shot on Twitter live stream, um, so I did just want to get on here, kind of give a brief in-person uh, take on what you should expect to see today. Um, but before I get into that, please, if you're watching this video, you appreciate what I'm doing here. The faster this page grows, the bigger the guests will get and the more people uh, we will have helped, you know, tap into this, tap into the culture, tap into improving their journey, tap into profiting in a variety of different ways. Um, so if you could please subscribe, like this video, um, and you know, check out some of my older videos uh, to see the other founders I've been blessed to have on here so far. But anyway, today, Ryan Ayala, host of the Alchemist Library podcast. Um, he's had the opportunity to sit down with some great minds in the space from Arlen Moore to Nicholas Cole to the king of obsession, Zach Pograb. Uh, Ryan is from my, or based out of Miami, Florida, um, and I've been following him for a pretty good amount of time right now, um, but he's one of the best hosts of the podcast that are coming up in the space right now. So I am super excited to sit down with him host an official interview. Uh, we're going to go over a lot of things. Usually I'll do these after we shoot the podcast because I don't know exactly which direction we're going to go. Um, but a few things I've just kind of got in my notes, you know, we're going to talk about success, talk about current events, you know, the creator economy, um, and then really dive into what the Alchemist Library podcast is all about, some of his favorite conversations, and some of his biggest takeaways from that. So thank you again. Please like, subscribe, share this with your friends, and I will see you next week. Ryan, you in here? Where? Yo. Yo, sorry about that. The I kind of dude, no up. worries. But I think we're, I think we're good. Hopefully, we'll still, uh, still be able to get some, uh, some people in here debating. You think I should check, take down my stories, or you think people will still just like click it and then see the one that's actually happening? On my yeah, account? I think that since it's live. It, yeah. it will it will show up on your account right when you uh when you go on. I'll retweet this real quick. Cool. Um, dude, how you doing? Good, man. Yeah. Just uh, are you still in Italy? I am. I'm in Spain at the moment. Fuck yeah, that's sick. Yeah, it's good. I'm doing uh, doing uh a little like monk mode type of thing that we could talk about a little later on for like the month of July out here. Um, in in your, just like going all around Europe, or I guess we'll talk about it on the podcast. But yeah, 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 we'll talk about it. But uh, yeah, just in Spain. Cool. I got I got a spot locked in for for the month, so okay. we will see how that goes. Cool, man. Yeah, we'll give uh give it like five five minutes or so. Do I sound okay coming through my my AirPods? Because I just don't have my my regular mic. Absolutely, yeah, it sounds good. And on okay. my end, pretty good. Yeah, 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 you're chilling. Sweet. What are you just using your? Do you just use your AirPods for these, or do you have like a? Do you set like how do you set this up typically? I I use like I use wired headphones, mm -hmm. and then usually I will uh, record on Riverside simultaneously with my mic, but um, I don't have Wi-Fi in this Airbnb right now, so. Um, yeah, you're good. I'm honestly glad uh, I've got to shoot this from from my house because I was and I've got like 
my mom's friends in town. We got all these people here. And I was like, we have a couple uh, places where like house sitting. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, can I just go crash at like one of the places and set up? And my parents are like, yeah, you can do that. Like whatever. So I had the whole thing like ready to go because I was afraid about the background and shit. But now we're, yeah. <laughs> now we're chilling. I can just Good. chop it up in my sweatpants. Um, Absolutely. I love yeah. Twitter spaces. Yeah, like it, it's cool. a very interesting medium. Yeah, this is cool. I think I'll, I'll definitely use it more and more, and then definitely uh, getting uh, I'll set up Riverside for the future ones. Because I was thinking about some of the guests I've had on here too, and I was like, damn, like imagine going live with Jacob Hopkins or Arlen or any of those yeah. those guys. You grow up, blow up pretty quick. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you will definitely talk about it in the episode. Um, mm-hmm. I've done, I've done probably like. I think 20 plus of these at this point now mm. um so definitely like definitely learned a lot about like this little pocket of called twitter spaces and uh some of the advantages and disadvantages of it so we could definitely talk about that if you want if you're interested yeah. no yeah for sure um, and then on your do you have a macbook or are you on a you have a P, like just a regular pc for for what are you talking about for anything like your laptop anything like yeah i use those or is it a mac um i use mac but pc do i think i need a pc well yeah why do you ask because i I downloaded i was testing it i know online you can't get twitter spaces but i figured i was like i tried downloading the the twitter app and so i was like oh maybe this is like a loophole first off if you have a mac the twitter app is so much like cleaner and like i don't know how to explain it i was just like oh, this is really like it kind of you can like have the screen be like really small on your laptop and just be like scrolling through which i like and then it says on the app store it says space is coming soon so mm-hmm. fingers crossed eventually you, you can definitely probably have your whole freaking setup on here let's see if uh what happens when i do this okay cool then Put this out. Me copy this screenshot. Oh, didn't screenshot. Why did I not screenshot? What? Okay, maybe I forgot how to do a screenshot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just gonna throw this in my. Yeah, do it up and then. Sweet. Right. I'm gonna. Uh, throw this on my IG story with the, the new link just in case. Uh, let's see. Well, let me, can I, can I open another app on this? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. That's, that's fine. I was able to leave the app, but I don't want to open Instagram and then it just take it off. So it's fine. Um, but yeah, let's give it a couple more minutes and then people probably hop on as we go. But either way, I don't know. I think like yeah. three, or, three or four people usually come on to the uh, the Instagram live, so I'm not too stressed about it. Um, yeah, but cool. And then, is it, how do you pronounce Zach's last name? Is it Pograb? P- Porgov. It's Porgov. Okay, because he spells it P O G R A B, so it's Porgov. Okay, so maybe I oh I think dyslexic Pograb. No, I think I might be just Pograv, 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 Pograv. Okay, because I knew I I think mess that up. Um, I always call him Behavior Hack, so I use it always. Yeah, I always get shook saying his last name. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Um, because I have it in my my intro. Um, and then cool. (sighs) You crutch. Um, yeah, and then just for the sake of, I did shoot an intro on, like, private Instagram Live, and so it's just going to be, like, when I launch the YouTube video, I'll have, like, me in person kind of, like, laying it out, Sweet. Um, and then I'll probably, once you hear me kind of start this with, like, the intro I kind of wrote out, just because I do want to try to make more of a point about, like, introducing the, the guest, even if nobody's in here, um, just for the sake of, like, spotify and what and whatnot i kind of like this because normally i'm like looking at my laptop then looking at the camera then looking at my laptop so this is 
This is yeah. good. I can just read it right off my notes. Um, Definitely some advantages to, to no video. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So I'll start the intro now, and then we'll just we'll just roll into it. And see, see who taps in. I know it's a Sunday. Most people are probably like mm, pretty tired from yesterday. Um, What's up, Greg? Cool. So, yeah. And then, can people like ask que- like put questions in this or or no? Yeah. If you see the um, there's like a thought bubble in the right hand corner. Yeah. Um, and then people could 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 do that. Okay, so I don't need to put anything in here. Okay, because I do kind of like nah. forget anybody on here. Um, but dope. So yeah, I'm gonna roll roll right in the intro, and then we'll just get uh we'll get rolling, dude. I'm pumped for this. Sweet. Okay. So, <clears throat> all right, to the three, four, five people on here so far, I sincerely appreciate you. Um, to everyone else that's going to catch this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube, I appreciate you even more. Please like, share, and subscribe um, if you do pull any value out of this. But joining me today is an up-and-coming voice in the world of personal development, entrepreneurship, and what is today called the creator economy. Through his podcast, The Alchemist Library, which showcases what many, su- many successful people from all over the world wish they knew in their 20s. He's already sat down with some of the greatest thinkers in the world today, such as King of Obsession, Zach Pograb, Mindset and Social Life Master, Arlen Moore, and award-winning ghostwriter, author, Nicholas, and award-winning ghostwriter and author, Nicholas Cole. Ryan, thank you for spending day 176 with us. I am so grateful to have you on the show. Um, and I do really want to give you a, a chance to really reflect on your journey today as someone who's in the process, you know, provide your perspective on success at, you know, about 22 at this 22 year old phase of life and then we'll uh we'll kind of take it in from there sweet brother i appreciate the intro so day 176 is that what is that for you what's the significance of that day 176 is just like i keep track of every single like this is the day 176 of this year so it's like you know taking people day by day kind of through the journey that's really just the significance of it we're in we're in week 26 right now um, but yeah, that's really the, the perspective on it. Um, but just to kind of get this rolling, man, I want to start obviously with what most people on, you know, Twitter spaces know you for, and also give you a quick shout out cause you were who exposed me to this space, um, of being able to kind of host podcasts on this platform. So definitely appreciate that. Um, but to just kind of roll right into talking about Alchemist library, I want to point to the, to start like the end of your intro on that podcast there's a quote that stood out to me it says are you doing this work to facilitate growth or to become famous which is more important getting or letting go so that is my first question to you when talking about the podcast and talking about kind of why you you started getting into this space in the first place what is that answer for you is it to facilitate growth become famous like which is more important kind of to you right now uh definitely facilitate growth but if i if i were to just reflect on that question a little further it's like um thinking about why i started this whole thing to begin with it really came from a lack and i i probably set off to try to improve myself um freshman year of college and we could get into the reasons why i wanted to do that if you'd like um Mm -hmm. but i really like found myself two years into this self-development journey. And I was just like, I, I stopped relating to the people around me. Um, I was in a very traditional like party scene at uh, the university of Miami. And I just stopped relating to the people around me. And I had great friends, people I love and still love. Um, but just their values were so different than mine. And because of that, it was like the things that they like to do were going out, getting drunk, um eating shitty food and uh like smoking all the time it just wasn't the lifestyle i was trying to live um so through that i think that produced a little bit of like loneliness and a lack at at times and um through that i really like leaned on podcasts and guys like joe rogan aubrey marcus chris williamson mark bell like these podcasters i listened to um 
really gave me this perspective that like I'm not crazy for trying to do all these things that I'm doing and um, really just showed me that like I'm doing the right thing and I'm on the right path and they honestly became like the people I spent the most time with for a significant part of, of college and you know we all know the quote like you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and I think that as I reflected back on that I definitely took that to heart I looked around and I was like the people that I'm around right now I do not want to be the sum of those people so how can I curate my reality to be different than that and what I ended up settling upon was I could use the internet and leverage the internet and make the five people I spend the most time with Joe Rogan Aubrey Marcus these guys I listed before and I could turn those people into the ones whose input was having the biggest effect on me. Um, mm-hmm. And I think eventually I just became so enthralled in podcasting and, or listening to podcasts that um, it built up this, des- this desire to start my own podcast. And um, mm-hmm. when that thought first popped in my head, you know, we all have so many limiting beliefs around that. And I thought like, who would want to listen to me? Um, why would any guest that I would want to have on the show want to come on my podcast and to see that play out and to realize that your limiting beliefs aren't the reality was a super good um, reminder to me. And, and something that I think is, is really now that I'm entering to this next step after doing the podcast for a year um, opens up this world that really everything is a self-imposed limit. And the sky is the limit when you truly believe that. And oftentimes the thing that's holding us back is ourselves more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, hundred percent. dude. And I love that the way you like first, like you're, I relate to that so much, not necessarily as to why I started my podcast, but the, the value gained, like why I started listening to so many I came to that realization like I'd always kind of been like like you said like watched the Joe Rogans of the world and he's like oh this is cool you know whatnot but the biggest pull was that thing you hit on where I was like oh like podcasts are just they put you in the room with people you wouldn't necessarily get to be in the room with like when I'm really dialed in listening to like a good podcast and my phone's away it just feels like I'm in the room with those guys and you know I'm the best listener in the room you know like they talk about like always you know, kind of try to leave a conversation, you know, letting other people explain themselves and talk about their interest. And it was like, oh, this is like a good practice for that when it comes to just normal day to day conversations. But then B, like you touched on, if all the conversations I'm hearing are from guys like Joe Rogan, guys like Chris Williamson, guys um, all across the space that are interviewing other people that are also, you know, they respect, then it's like, I'll just naturally come to you know, become one of those people or like, you know, start to follow traits that, that those highly successful people have. I think it's one of the greatest advantages we have in like, we will talk about more and more here pretty soon, the creator economy, right? Like it's one of the, the great, um, the great advantages we have uh, to just tap in with whoever we really want to tap into and listen to their thoughts. And, you know, for me, it's like, and I don't know if you also feel this, sometimes you'll be having a thought and then you'll turn on a podcast or maybe you have a question or an insecurity and the podcast will like kind of do like answer that question or so for you. Um, so I guess my next question for you is kind of be, would start to dive into the guest a little bit. You know, personally, I want to know kind of one of the episodes maybe you consumed that had the greatest impact on you and maybe like what, what your biggest takeaway was from it. And then also someone you hosted and like, if you could tell us kind of a little bit about that and like one of the big takeaways you had from one of those people too. So I will, I'll do the one that I probably got the most from, uh, I feel like my cop out answer. And the first one that comes to mind is Naval Ravikant on Joe Rogan. Um, just mm-hmm. such a classic one. And Naval is such a thoughtful, thoughtful person didn't, and definitely changed my perspective on a lot. I'm trying to think if there's if there's a better answer to that question. Um, there is there is this one there's this one episode of Aubrey Marcus and this guy Danielle Boyelli. 
who hosts this podcast called History on Fire, and he's also a philosophy professor. He's been on Joe Rogan, I think, upwards of 14 times, if, I, if, get, if I'm getting that number correctly. And um, he is he's a special dude and a special thinker. And um, the way that he broke down ancient uh, Chinese and Japanese philosophy uh, was just fascinating to me. And it really, I think, maybe not the content itself was the most meaningful to me, but it really opened my eyes to the fact that there is so much information out there. And maybe that information, if, if it was a different person relaying that information to me, maybe it wouldn't have been as pertinent. But because he was such a great speaker and teacher, um, it really like made me so, so interested in what he was saying. Um, so I think that brought forth this idea that like oftentimes it's not the information, but the teacher. And um, you can just really learn so much about something if you have the right person to to get that information from. And uh, I've been listening to a lot of like founders podcasts recently, which if you haven't listened to, like highly recommend it. Um, this guy, David Senra, reads these biographies on the history's greatest entrepreneurs and then distills them in like this hour long podcast. And he does such a great job of like connecting it to different things and um he has really um, made me so aware of the importance of self-belief in entrepreneurship. And um, so between like founder stuff and b- between the founders as a whole as a podcast and uh, uh, Naval podcast, the episode with Naval and Joe Rogan and Danielle Boyelli, that's probably – my three from a consumption standpoint in terms of a personal standpoint um i i really think that um probably the episode with arlen um arlen moore in california stands out to me not for any particular reason just the fact that like i had consumed arlen's content for so long um before even starting a podcast that um, going out to California to do an in-person podcast with him really brought things kind of full circle. And I was like, holy shit, like um, I'm really doing this thing. And to the point of what you're saying before it, like it took me to the room. It took me to a room that I would have never gotten into um, without the podcast. So I think it just speaks on the, um, the power and the importance of doing cool things and doing cool things on the internet. And I think if you do that and do it for a long enough timeline, um, it's going to put you in a really unique and interesting situation to create a very interesting network that outside of the internet, you would have never been able to, to create because odds are um, if you're trying to become an uncommon person, uncommon people aren't going to be found in, your small town or your small city and you really have to leverage the power, the power of the internet to, uh, to find those people. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And another like key point you hit on there, right? Like if you keep telling people, you know, this is who you are for an extended period of time, you know, you eventually really do become that person. I know I've said this on here before, but I always like to, like I use the Justin Bieber example just because he was someone who started at like 16 And the only reason people know who Justin Bieber is is because he went out in the street and sang and told people exactly who he was from a very young age until, you know, eventually he was able to blow up. Like how else? I think there's a lot of people out here. They want to do these cool things, have that experience like you had with Arlen and myself. And they like, like you said, they have all these limiting beliefs or or whatnot. And then they get obsessed with, oh, I haven't made it yet. I don't, you know, this and that. And it's like, how long have you told people that, you know, this is who you want to be and this is who, like, these are your goals and these are your thoughts. Like, if you don't share your thoughts with people, how do you ever expect them to relate? It's like people, and I want to hear your take on this as far as what you think holds a lot of, there's a lot of great minds and thinkers in this space that don't have podcasts that have mentioned starting one. So I am curious to kind of hear 
what you think the limiting beliefs are personally it's more about what we just talked about like you're going to open the door for disagreement and people are like so afraid of that but you don't get the agreement without putting it out there and you know risking the disagreement so i'm kind of curious you know what do you think holds a lot of guys in this space back whether they're already established and haven't started a podcast or they're looking to start a podcast and just they won't yeah i think i think it's such a slow grind podcasting and out of all mediums i think it's one of the slowest to grow it's it's almost a war of attrition um it's not something that like blows up overnight and it's not this thing that um even after one year that you're going to like be making money off of or or be able to leverage into something else It, it really is like a long slow grind and in the end it's it definitely will get you where you want to go but you have to be prepared to to do it for years before you see any type of monetary gain whatsoever um so i think if you like do it for money it's like a really hard thing to actually be able to do and to do successfully just because it is so long until you get those results that you're looking for um and i think also like it seems it seems intimidating um muddy water always looks deep and when you're uncertain about something and the path is unclear and you don't like you don't know what equipment you need you don't know how to contact guests you don't know the path to take it seems a lot more complicated than it actually is and i think that that holds true for a lot of fields um and you just have to start taking steps towards it like if it if it's really something that you feel called to do um as you start taking steps towards that goal, the path will get clearer and clearer. And it's only something that like, like a year into this journey, I spent probably the first, so I think I'm in month 14 of the podcast right now. And I spent the first year with um, no huge spikes in growth, nothing significant really happening in terms of, making the podcast blow up. Um, And then I think in month 13, I had more downloads than I did in the first year combined. Mm -hmm. And then um, putting on top of that now, like now I'm entering, now I'm in the middle of month 14 and I'm, I I just have a lot more clarity. And I think that, um, you know, clarity comes with time. And it, when we, we want to have everything figured out at the starting line so we can just execute this plan nice and easy. But um, I think it's a long, slow grind, an unclear grind, and a path that, one, might not make you rich and a path that's going to require a lot of work for, from you before you start to, before the outside world starts to reward you for it. Um, so that's probably what I would have to say in terms of the things that keeps people from starting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I think like, uh, kind of curious to, you know, hear your take on this too, you know, what you expected, like, can you talk to me about your expectations? Maybe let's call it two months, two or three months in, um, and then how those expectations have changed now hitting like week 14 uh or sorry not week 14 sorry month 14 15 because i know in my experience expectations at the beginning compared to how i've learned to manage them now has changed a lot but i am kind of curious especially for those that are just starting out that like you said they're probably in the same spot you're like wow this isn't really getting a lot of downloads this isn't really like blowing up like i may have thought is the mistake in the expectation before you start or is it like, is it as the podcast starts to grow, adjusting to how the expectations will change in a sense, I think is really where I'm, I'm kind of trying to go. Yeah, yeah. I think there are two perspectives of it, two perspectives on it. I think the first one is like when you're first starting a pursuit and like you look and you see that you have, let's see, you see 40 people see your tweet and five people like it. 
And because of the internet, that seems like such an insignificant um, amount of people. But if you had 40 people in front of you, that would be a much different perspective. And you would probably be pretty nervous to to talk to those people if you had to give a presentation in front of them. Um, so I, I think definitely how you view the situation is one. And then second, um, I'm a big believer that expectations are the root of a lot of unhappiness. And like this is something I learned through baseball. And um, I was always somebody who like placed such high expectations on things. And through disappointment and through time, I just learned that, um, like I said, expectations are the root of a lot of unhappiness and a lot of unsatisfaction. And um, so through that, I took that perspective and uh, applying it to the podcast, I just said to myself, like, I'm doing this thing for me. I'm doing it to be have conversations with people I would, who – Otherwise, without the podcast, I would never be able to have a conversation with. And if I'm able to accomplish that, like that's the win. It's the conversation itself is the win. Um, and I really brainwash myself into, one, not having expectations, and two, not caring about what the number of views are or um, number of downloads. And I think that, for me allowed this thing to have a lot more longevity because if I if I said to myself I want to have x amount of listeners by day 30 it would have produced a much different outcome and uh you know we grow into things like um I'm sure you know this as well like the person you are as a podcaster and the person you are as a person um is a lot different than when you were when you started this pursuit uh, so I think just allowing yourself to have to disconnect from the result and just really focus on the process and the thing is going to allow you to have much more longevity with whatever pursuit you're, you're pursuing. Mm, yeah. And how have you personally, like you just hit on a very key point there. How has the podcast changed like you would say you for the better like where have you seen the most growth in your life since starting the podcast since being able to sit down with all of these successful people 100 percent in my relationships and conversations um it i don't think that the the amount you have to listen to be a good podcast host is something that you rarely do in day-to-day life. And as I started diving deeper and deeper and doing more and more podcasts, I realized that listening is a meditation and it takes an emptiness um, in order to be truly listening to somebody. Um, So when I am in the middle of a conversation, I like disconnect from who I am as a person and all these thoughts running into my head. And I'm able to lock into this like meditative state where I'm solely listening to what the person's saying. And I think the only reason I'm able to, or was able to do that at first was because it was such high stakes. Like I, I needed to listen to this person so deeply so I could say something back and ask them a good question. Um, so through those stakes, I learned like the power of listening And then I was able to take that skill and use it in daily relationships. And um, I think I just really, one, learned to listen and one, learned to keep a conversation going without it feeling like, without it feeling forced. And now I'm so confident in my ability to sit down with anybody and just talk and talk and talk and talk. And I think we lost that skill in modern life with technology because any second of discomfort or awkwardness leads us to pick up our phones. Um, So reconnecting with that ability to converse with somebody really has transformed our relationships. And there's a study that Stephen Bartlett, Bartlett from the Diary of the CEO talks about where it's, it's a, 
a study where the psychologist, I believe, I might butcher um, the telling of this story, but they did this study looking at asking somebody and listening to them these 30 questions. And at the end of these 30 questions, people reported to almost fall in love with the person that was asking them questions. Uh, So if you could really just like truly tap into your ability to listen to somebody and to be more concerned with that, what they have to say than what you say and taking the focus away from yourself and putting it onto them is it will do wonders for your ability to connect with people. And, uh, it truly has been something that I'm so grateful the podcast has taught me. And it's not something that you need a podcast to be able to learn. Just like next time you're in conversation, truly, truly, truly try to listen to somebody and treat it as if it is a podcast in a way. And I think you're going to see your relationships and your ability to converse transform. Um, And I think it's a skill that everybody needs to develop if they want to be somebody who is social and connects with people on a, on a deeper level. Yeah. I, I really do agree with that. And I think um, the one thing you really touched on there that I want to go back to, and I knew I was going to draw a blank um, as soon as I, I brought it up. Oh, it was this, it was like, if you listening to your, I'm really glad you, highlighted some key action steps for you know like you said either podcasters out there or anyone who just wants to become a better conversationalist about how you kind of let your mind go blank when you're in the conversation and that allows you to be a better listener because personally and i know this from watching guys that aren't necessarily as like high level skilled as what they are but a high level skill for a podcaster to me is something that stood out to me listening to your podcast out like you are very good with all of these guests about taking pauses and really interpreting what they just said and not just jumping to the next question. Um, you'll even notice, I probably do this a couple of times on this episode today where I'm kind of like, sometimes I'll be thinking about the next question a little bit instead of just being a completely open listener and letting the questions flow to you based on what the, what the guest just said. So I think that's awesome that you just shared that, you know, how can somebody become a better listener? Well, you know, quiet your mind and really hone in with what the person you're talking to is saying, and then just continuing to, you know, unwrap that even more. Um, so I think that's, that's really awesome. I appreciate that. And like um, that, just that being comfortable with that silence and that stillness for those three seconds that it takes for you to say something next um, is something that, you know, really it feels so uncomfortable at first, but there really is a beauty in it and it's hard to describe. Um, And sometimes like I'll be listening so deeply and the person will stop talking and I'll have absolutely nothing to say. And all I will do in that situation is just say, it's just almost repeat what they said back to me. So like they would say, yeah, but they'll talk about a situation and I'll just I would be listening so intently and they'll finish and I'll have nothing to say. And I'll say, wow, that situation must have been really tough. And that's it. And just being comfortable with making a statement and not always having to ask a question was something that allowed me to understand that people want to elaborate on a story, but they want to have permission to do so because they feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable rambling on for five plus minutes um so just allowing somebody to to ramble and giving them that permission to do so uh definitely probably took me like 15 20 podcasts to even get into a place where i could get comfortable making a short statement um because i i always felt like i had to have a question question ready and so disregarding that um I think allowed the conversation to have a lot more flow and allowed it to get deeper on key points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, Now you've interviewed 
you know, a lot of successful people just across, across the board. And I've heard kind of a couple sides to this story kind of of success and like the perspective of success. But Chris Williamson hit it, hit on, hit it right on the nose for me this morning. He kind of brought this perspective to light. I was listening to his podcast with Stephen Bartlett um, on Diary CEO. And he talks about, you know, the study that was done that, you know, nine, like a very high percentage of successful people are fear driven. Is that what you've experienced as well in the guests you've had on the show? And I, I would kind of sway that personally, but I know, you know, you're still in build mode and I don't want to like put this perspective, you know, like get, I don't, I'm not here to give people advice on, you know, necessarily how to be super successful, but I am curious with the successful people that you've interviewed, you know, would you say it seems like a majority of them are fear driven or the other factors that stood out to you as to why that person, you know, is where they are at. It's funny. I, I, I like to hold, I like to disconnect from judgment a lot when, when I'm having a conversation with somebody and try not to have an opinion on things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've never really thought about it and it's an interesting perspective and maybe I'll change from fear driven to uh, driven from a insecurity or a lack. It's coming from a place where I think most of us are, which is like we want something that we don't have. Um, and maybe that's coming from fear. Um, and I'm sure usually it is, but I think, it starts off for a lot of people um, and a lot of people I've interviewed as something that they're chasing coming from this like insecurity or place from of lack, but through that process and through this grind of trying to accomplish something, you fall in love with the work itself and it becomes a part of you and becomes a vessel of flow. And it allows you to enter into the state of consciousness that without that thing, it would be really hard to accomplish. And I think that most people outside of professional athletes and probably like writers, maybe a few other uh, professions as well, very few people get into flow state with, with their work and with the things that they're doing. And I think that although what's driving a lot of the people that I have conversations with may be a lack initially. I think with time, it turns into a craving and an addiction of flow state and of that flow that their work provides them. Um, and even conversation, like I started the conversation, I started uh, my podcast because I wanted to have these conversations with people that I wanted to feel stimulated in that regard and have these conversations I would have never had otherwise. But with time, it, it became a craving of this flow state that conversation puts me in. And I think that would probably reign true for the large majority of the people I interviewed. Um, I'd be curious for that answer for you as well. What do you think? As far as if I think like a majority, like this, the fear driven factor of everything on success um yeah no i've got a pretty unique perspective on that too i definitely like what you what you hit on there about like you know coming from usually like you're going after something you you don't have and you know it takes a lot of humility to to pinpoint that and i think again like we talked about earlier why a lot of people don't start is because that is probably the most powerful factor to at least get the ball rolling because then you, like you said, I like how you said it develops from, it may start with something you lack and, you know, highlights that there's nothing wrong with that. And then it kind of transitions into this flow state of like, Oh, I, I love solving this problem constantly. Like I love not necessarily that problem, but like I love solving this, you know, consistently and getting more information kind of on this topic and, and flowing into things. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a, like I've heard this before, you know, a lot of many successful people, you know, it comes from a slight, uh, they have a slight superiority complex hmm. and then they, but they also are, uh, they have, you know, deep insecurities and it's such an interesting, like, I don't know, conundrums the right word, 
but like more like contrast like oh okay so a lot of successful people are like slightly delusional and they slightly think they're like better than a lot of people but a lot of them are also producing content and doing these things stemming from a place of fear like to kind of eradicate some sort of insecurity they have so yeah i do think a lot of successful people are fear driven from the start but i would more almost agree after hearing you say that that it may start like that but that doesn't mean that's how it always is going to be like you won't always wake up and be like oh i'm doing this podcast to you know become like to you know uh shade this fear of like not being enough or not being important um and that was my just because i want to relay this question back to you my kind of what was i running not running away from but like what were the insecurities that were kind of pulling from it and i think it stemmed from just like high school and middle school and like just coming up being not someone that was really out of my shell a lot like i was very shy and i was like even in when i look back at high school experiences like i had a pretty good amount of friends i was pretty well known but i didn't build a lot of relationships that were super meaningful and just purely because i don't I just didn't know how to really express myself uh, in a way that I felt comfortable. And then like coming on, starting the podcast, I was like, oh, I can really speak my mind. I can interview people that I feel you know comfortable with or that I want to learn from. And it'll allow me to kind of showcase the highest version of myself without having to be like super public and in someone's face about it. Um, so it did kind of give me a feeling of importance. So I guess you could say that, you know, I, I felt like I lacked a feeling of importance but also I throw that back on myself of like, I don't blame anyone else for that. I just, I wasn't comfortable enough expressing who I really was. Um, so I am kind of curious, what was that for you? Like, what were the, what do you get out of this that you didn't have, you know, before that, you know, kind of helps solve that for you? I think it's intellectual stimulation. Um, mm-hmm. I think that I just... I think it stemmed from like somewhat of a place of loneliness and just that I wanted to have deep and meaningful conversations and mm-hmm. I couldn't really find that in daily life. And I couldn't find those people to engage with in a stimulating way. And um, I used the podcast as that outlet and it really did fulfill that desire for me. And it's like, it's then trickled over into my ability to cultivate that with other people who like, you know, otherwise if I did it, if I wasn't a podcaster, I wouldn't be able to get people to open up deeply and get them in that state outside of the podcast. And in just a dinner or hanging out with friends, I'm able to then facilitate that deeper conversation um, that I was seeking But it's only because I have the skills that I learned from the podcast to be able to do that. So really, I think it just stemmed from this desire to have more intellectual conversations. And I think that conversation is how you develop your thinking. And you learn through conversation, not only from other what other people say, but you learn about yourself and like your own beliefs and you organize your thinking in that process. And I think that's hard to do if you don't have someone who's equally as interested in what you're talking about um, to have that conversation with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I am um, want to talk about a few, just kind of shift gears a a little bit, kind of talk about some of your, your previous episodes. Obviously I mentioned the, the Nicholas Cole conversation stood out to me because you were able to get this out of him where he provided this whole new perspective to me around um, just the creator economy producing content, you know, why people put out content. Like we've talked about a lot of it. It's just something we like to do, but his perspective was more, you know, like a lot of people say they don't care about the outcome, but then, you know, the outcome comes and they feel a little disappointed, you know? So like, what's your perspective on, you know, niching down versus being the niche? Is there, like, can you kind of take me in that? Absolutely, yeah. So to give people some context, um, I had a conversation with Nicholas Cole, who runs Ship30. He's a big content creator on Twitter. Highly recommend you follow him. He, he provides great context or content. Um, 
And in our conversation, we, we had this, what started off as almost a debate. Um, be, and I, I was, I was of the belief that you need to be like this niche of one and kind of do what you love, write about what you, what you love to talk about and then let the chips fall where they may. And he was of the belief that you niche down, get super, super, super specific, create this cult following within a community for this one thing, and then slowly go more and more broad. And uh, I think he's right. And I think he's right if your goal is to become famous or if your goal is to have this huge following um, and do that in the quickest manner possible. I think it takes a lot of time to build an audience around you as a person versus if I were to be the functional bodybuilding guy and I only created content around functional bodybuilding, quick, very quickly I'd be able to amass people who are interested in that topic. Um, and when you're talking about things all over the place, it's harder to it's harder to grow and it's harder to uh, be someone of authority. So I think the answer is almost it depends. Uh, initially, I, I think it's great advice. But for myself, I really struggle putting myself in a box. Like I love nutrition. I love creating content. And uh, I love talking about creating content. I love talking about philosophy. I love talking about all these different things with all these different types of people. And I set out to, for this podcast, not for the goal of amassing 100,000 subscribers, but for the goal of having cool conversations with people I was genuinely interested in. And I don't want to not have on a Danco because I'm solely talking about nutrition. Um, so I don't know. To me, it's, it's a delicate balance. And it all kind of depends on what your ultimate goal is. But I think ultimately, if you, if you want to get results, follow Nick's advice of getting ultra specific about who you or who you're targeting and what you want to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it definitely changed my perspective on a lot having that conversation. What what for you opened your eyes about that conversation? Well, yeah, it's it's cool. Um, first off, you know that like you just hit on it's like you're. It's so funny how like I don't know when you set that intro to your to the end of your podcast, but now like hearing that you've had somebody who kind of came on and gave a perspective of really how to become famous, and then the way I interpret it, like the quickest versus if you're just trying to facilitate growth, because like growth is this long steady grind. And becoming famous, like you could be an overnight sensation and then, you know, the fame, the fame could die down two weeks later. So I think like if you're in this to facilitate growth and create sustainability, are you, you're going to want to wake up every day and do that because you know, personally, you're getting better. But if you just want to get famous and you just want to get the views up and you just want to do this, I think if there's a whole nother skill set involved of being able to drown out the noise of what you really want. And focusing on, I guess, in a way, what other people want, but also like we talked about, like it's just a niche, a very specific group of people, what they want, and then waking up every day for the next 90 days, year, two, three years, and focusing strictly on that. So, um, yeah, what stood out to me about that conversation was just he was very blunt in saying, look, if you want to get everyone he just really focused on the desire that a lot of people have everyone has when they like they think the only reason that people make content on the internet is to get famous or to have some sort of monetary gain um and while that stuff can come to you it's more a matter of like he just kind of highlighted the point of what is your timetable if you're thinking about the timetable i think that's absolutely amazing advice if if you're not then i think you could still achieve that fast success but personally, I think you just have to be more willing to adapt and change and study what's working and what's necessarily not. And then just to keep tailoring it to your style, to where you feel comfortable and 
you know, wanting to like feeling like worthy enough of putting it out uh, day after day. So I think like there's a whole skill set on that side of things where it's like if you're facilitating, you can facilitate growth and become famous, but you have to be willing to change a lot more than the person who just wants to become famous. He gave you a perfect like what's the like in that podcast, like he gives you a perfect step by step plan of here's how you can really do this, you know, niche down, get very specific, build that way for a certain period of time and then start to include your own style to it. So he kind of like did the he kind of like did the reverse. Um, and that process doesn't involve a ton of change in my opinion. I think that process, you could write it out and write a 90 day plan, or write a six month plan. And as long as you stick to that plan and you're disciplined enough to stick to that plan, then cool. Like you're going to see those, those results you talk about. Do I think you'll be as fulfilled when you get there? Not necessarily, but if you can look at it as temporary and just again, commit yourself to that six months and then be like, okay, and now it's okay for me to start really including my own style into this. Um, so like, yeah, I think you could do it at the, like at the end of one of those periods, or you can do it as you go, but just understand like things can't just consistently stay the same. Um, Chris Williamson again, hit on this. It's like you get into these patterns where it's like, you just do the same, you, the first idea you have, you think like, that's what you need to just stick to for 10 years. And that's how you achieve it. But in reality, it's like, that's what gets you started how much are you willing to change and adapt and, you know, of course, like grow through that and like make that a point to kind of like expand your, expand your reach, expand your horizons in that, in that sense. So I know that was like a long winded answer, but it's just like a lot to, there's definitely a lot to, to un- unpack, unpack on that. 100%. On that side of that. I think you, yeah, you could, you could really go, you could really go either way. Yeah. Um, and it, just one thing based off what you just said, yeah. Um, is I think that like, yes, you start off and you do this thing, but ultimately, no matter if you're niching down or if you're going broad, you need to find a pocket of greatness. And people often find this pocket of greatness as the niche. And, um, so if you are, if you create AI content and then chat GPT blows up, and then as a result, you blow up, you found a small pocket of greatness that then elevated you up. And if you look at guys like Dan Co, guys like Zach uh, Porgov, I uh, hope I'm saying his last name right, and you look at what they did with the animations, they found like this small pocket of greatness outside of the niche or whatever um, for them to double down on and to explode what they do and to 10x what they do. So they were both guys who had around 100,000 followers on Instagram and then started creating these very cool, quick 15, 30 second animation videos and then both exploded in a matter of a month from 100,000 followers to a million plus followers um, because they found this small pocket of greatness and it takes a super particular type of awareness um, to find that thing. But I think you ultimately, whether you're going super broad or super niche, you always need to keep this eye open for what can, what can be my small pocket of greatness that, ultima- that ultimately 10Xs me or 100Xs the, the stuff that I'm doing. Um, so I think that you just need to keep that particular sense of awareness of like continue to iterate, but always keep an eye open for what I can be doing from a content creation standpoint to totally change the game. Yeah, no, really cool there because like we were talking about kind of off camera or off recording, I guess at first was we were talking about these Twitter spaces, right? And you've said you've done how many of these to this point? I think I've probably done about 20, 20 of them. Cool. And why did you, and you literally use the same words. You said, I've kind of like, I think I've found this like a little small pocket of, of greatness of how to really, you know, broadcast this podcast. What stood out to you about Twitter spaces? And then obviously to the, to the general public, like what, what have you, like, why do you see it as such a great little, uh area to you know differentiate yourself so i mean 
if you look who there there's very few people holding a podcast uh consistently on twitter um so that's one thing second the, the ability to get the audience involved involved is super interesting um and then there's just a clear cut easy way to take the audience from the person who um who you're interviewing right so like let's say i have a conversation with um dakota robertson who who i had a twitter twitter space with a few months ago and i think about 450 500 people joined that space and i must have gotten 60 70 followers from that space um and that really opened my eyes up to the fact that like if I could just do the same thing consistently, that number is just going to continue to grow. And it's such a clear cut, easy way to start to grow a podcast. Um, and really just brought that to, to my field of awareness. And if I had Dakota Robertson on my podcast and just posted it on Spotify and recorded it privately, I guarantee you the majority of those people would have one never even knew that I had this recording with Dakota. They would have never knew that that this podcast was even up or existed. And two, they probably would have never even checked it out. Um, So holding it on Twitter just allowed people to, to find, uh, find the conversation and to join in and to interact with it. And um, I think like, so I had a conversation. um, I had a conversation, a few days ago which i i'm looking for it right now okay yeah so i had a conversation a few days ago um with mind tendencies two and he's a big content creator in the space of like mindfulness and that recording has 1950 views from the twitter space and wow. If, if, um, I think in my, I think from Twitter spaces. So before I did Twitter spaces, I did a year of podcasting. And from month, from the first month of holding Twitter spaces, I was able to ha- get more views in that one month than I did in that whole first year of podcasting. Um, so I think it just holds this opportunity that a lot of people, aren't leveraging and aren't using. So I'm going to really try to just put that experiment to the test and see if this is something worth going all in on. And I'm, I'm taking the month of July to, to really focus in on that and to see whether Twitter spaces are this hidden gem. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to, to see how that pans out, but it, it definitely is a unique opportunity that I don't think, a lot of um, podcasters are are understanding and seeing that you can go and live stream your podcast on Twitter and open open up to a whole new audience that you would have never attracted without doing that. Yeah, yeah, very very interesting take. I'm very like I really hope like especially the people that that listen to this just for your sake and in general, I want to really make a point of this as I continue to go through this. Like you're definitely, it's, it, you may not be like the first person, but you're definitely probably the first, one of the first hundred people in my opinion, especially just in this whole arena um, to do this. So I think like that aspect of it to me is very cool. Like I love seeing stuff that people are trying that makes sense that maybe not a ton of people have, have picked up on yet and it was like the the same time you told me about live twitter spaces and if i'm being totally honest it may have been how i actually was introduced to you is i think i saw you were hosting one and i'm just on like you know that money side of twitter where it's like all those all those creators in this space and i never like tapped into any but i was like that was like how i saw your name at first and i was like oh cool he's got like podcast and i've heard of that the book the alchemist and i was like oh i'm sure it's it's pretty like along the same lines 
um, as far as what I'm trying to do. But at the same time, I was at that time, a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about, oh, maybe I should do more like Instagram live. And maybe I should go on Instagram live and like, just show like the raw unedited, you know, this is us chopping up, having a conversation. You know, a lot of the podcast I host, it's the first time I'm actually talking to these people for an extended period of time, like not over text. So I always thought that was like a unique kind of angle to go where it's just like, oh, what would it be like to record the first conversation I have with this highly successful person, you know, and then like finding different ways to, to outlet it so that people can see that's what we're actually doing. Um, very interesting. So I hope you get your flowers on that when every other podcaster in the world starts posting <laughs> all of their, all of their stuff on, on Twitter spaces, because Ryan Ayala was one of the first. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's super cool. That's super cool to me. Um, now I'm curious, this is like one question I have just cause I know like while we're interviewing people and as many people as, as you've interviewed in the past, we give a lot of advice. We absorb all of this information and I can, it's like impossible to take action on, on all of that information. So I'm really curious, you know, what's a piece of your own advice you'd say you give a lot, but don't take enough. Ooh. Um, Probably you could be great today, but instead you choose tomorrow. I think that, like, cool. I think I, I probably come off like I am ultra disciplined and, like, ultra ultra in it and ultra just this guy doing every single thing um, and trying to do it every single day and – I'm perfectly on point with my diet because I talk about diet all the time or I'm perfectly on point with um, my sleep schedule because I'm always talking about sleep, like all these things. Um, I think that sometimes I, I fall into the trap of back on schedule tomorrow or back back on it tomorrow. Um, I try not to to be somebody who like will ever – will ever talk, will ever talk it and not walk it. Um, so I think most of the, most of the, or almost all the advice I give, I, I truly do um, use and believe, but I think I might give off the perspective at times just based on the people I interview that I'm constantly living this incredibly disciplined, optimized lifestyle uh, because I'm always talking about these nutrition, diet, sleep, all this type of stuff. Um, but I think often I fall into a trap of I'll do it tomorrow. And um, I definitely think it's something that, that I need to get better with. And like all things, it's a muscle. And the more you work it, the the better you get with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's really good. And I think just to make a clear point on that, I mean, that's the reality of being 22 and trying to do something significant, right? Like we've been adults in adulthood, quote unquote, for you know, four years, like not even. And it's like, there's this perspective that just because, you know, you have a podcast and you're on Spotify and you're on YouTube and, you know, there are certain people that will take, you know, like they get a lot of value out of what, you know, you're saying and probably, Put, they probably put that label on you like, oh, you know, I can't do that unless I'm perfect because Ryan's perfect and he dials in all of these, you know, key things each and every day. And that's why he's able to have, you know, Arlen Moore on his podcast. And that's why he's able to have Zach Porgrab on his podcast. I, I know I butchered it again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And that's why, you know, he's able to have Nicholas Cole on his podcast. So I'm, I'm glad you shared that because I think that's so, that's so important. And I know, like, like you said, you're only going to get better. And by the time, you know, you're 25, that probably will be your reality. Like reality is like, you won't feel really great about your day unless you get up and do all of those things. But the reason you're able to do them without really thinking about them at that point is because you had this conversation at 22 or because you heard that conversation at 21 and then just started stacking it. And by the time you hit that point where it was your every day, now you're 25, 26. And the guy who told you that advice is 40, 40 plus. Like anyone who takes like advice from, Joe Rogan, it's like you have to take it with a grain of salt just because you're listening to a guy that's 
you know, 40, 30 plus years in the game. You know, he's thir- he took him. So don't get so obsessed with like, you know, I got to be there tomorrow or like I got to develop these traits now. But if you start them now, I'm sure as hell you'll be there. You know, you'll have it way more dialed in than maybe he did at, you know, I guarantee 22 to 25. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that like, I already see it in myself and in um, like the amount of work it takes to, to maintain the level of discipline that I have now is um, it's not a lot. And it, it, my diet is so much more locked in than it was three years ago when it required all this so much discipline and I was like miserable uh, and I was like working so hard um, and I, I, I saw it and I was like this is so unsustainable um, but as I kept with that path like now that that's almost on autopilot so once you stay in stay in the world um, of self-development long enough to see results you begin to um, crave to keep going because you, you you see just how far you can take it. You made that note right there about Joe Rogan. It's like, if you start this young enough, what is the end game there? What is the limit? Like there, there is so much you can accomplish by simply avoiding bad habits at a young age. Um, and just n- no matter what your age is, just avoid avoiding bad habits is the majority of the game. So, really just getting that dialed in and understanding you're not going to be perfect today, but you're not striving for prote- perfection today. You're striving for protection, perfection 10, 20 years from now. Um, so I think it's, it's an important note there and it's something super interesting that I wonder if how much the internet has opened that up for people. And now with the access of information that we have about nutrition, diet, training, um, how much better people are going to get on a on a large frame um, if you're able to stick with it for for decades? Yeah, and I want to talk about you know how you're getting ready to really you know implement that consistency, but just because you just touched on that in that in your last statement about how like we have access to all this information now, and like in my opinion, we're at. Well, actually, I want to hear your perspective on this first, but what is your, would you say, based on that point, you know, the fact that we have access to all this information that, you know, for us, you know, our parents definitely didn't, didn't have access to, do you think it's an advantage to have all of this information at our fingertips? Do you think we're at a disadvantage, um, especially for those coming up? Like my brother was born in 2004. He does not know a world where people don't have iPhones in their hand at 14. Mm-hmm. Like he has no clue what that really looks like. I can tell you being in middle school, there was still a little bit of that. A lot of people didn't get phones. So they were still like around 16 ish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm curious. Do you think we're at an advantage having all this information at our fingertips? Do you think it's a disadvantage because we, the, the strength and the discipline it must've taken for the people that are successful now in their mid forties, like pre iPhone, pre social media, like, I uh, was, you know, they had to really grind for it compared to now. It feels like it's all at our fingertips. Do you think it's an advantage or a disadvantage? You know, it's, it's a great question. And I think we're like cactus and rainforest. Uh, we're really built for a world of scarcity and we live in one of total abundance. And our biology, I, I really like that. Our biology wants us to eat as much food as we can and to always be scrolling and searching for that dopamine hit. Um, and that is creating a lot of unconscious human beings. Um, but if you're able to take the good and disregard the bad, it truly puts you in this, it opens up this opportunity that no one else in any time of history has ever been given. So if you can learn to discipline yourself in a way to turn off the apps and to be consistent with your diet and with training and try to starve off the modern vices that we have, you can put yourself in a situation to, to create, to create something spectacular. And um, 
I think it's Naval who has the who has a quote along the lines of um, cheap dopamine is the modern day struggle and the ancient struggle was war and you having to go through all these things and there might have been a plague and there was there were so many things that weren't in your control um, that were causing a struggle for you. And now the, the struggle is cheap dopamine. And the good news about that is it's almost entirely in your control. So, I mean, we, we struggle with this and I'm far from perfect with it, but it allows for the opportunity if you can discipline yourself and use your phone in a conscious, in a conscious way and be conscious with the things you consume and where you're getting your dopamine from. It allows for a super unique opportunity. And, um, I hope that I'm able to leverage it correctly. And um, I think that I think that it le- evens out the playing field for a lot of people in a really cool way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, I think at a pure basis, we are at a significant advantage. But like you just hit on, in the past, they had wars. And now, you know, I know Arlen has this and his – intro to a lot of his show or like his i call it a show but his intro to a lot of his vlogs where it's like you know it's not a it's not like a a war that's necessarily taking place in the physical world it's like a it's a spiritual war Mm. right like it's like a it's a spiritual war to not let the opinion all these opinions that we now have access to influence you know a majority of our decisions like you're constantly personally facing that battle of like not like you said you know filtering out what's good for your consumption and what's deterring you away and you know on the idea of you know the part of the war being all this access to cheap dopamine you know like chris williams has been quoted as saying multiple times like just because it's easy and convenient doesn't mean it's necessarily good for you you know it doesn't mean um just because you can get doordash from your phone doesn't mean it's it's good that now instead of that being a you know walk to your favorite local place and have a conversation with the owner like it that, that will honestly probably advance you a lot further in your life just uh, with that small example than just ordering it from your phone having no communication with anyone seeing it at your doorstep and then going back right to what you were doing you know playing video games scrolling on tiktok doing whatever like it's easy it's convenient it fulfills you because you know you're feeding your yourself but it's not necessarily the it wasn't necessarily the best decision if you're if you were focused on you know overall growth like it wasn't necessarily the best thing you could have you could have really implemented um there absolutely yeah it's um it's hard and i think that like uh we've almost taken all struggle out of life right like it's (laughs) <laughs> it's so easy to be that to rid your life of, of struggle now that like people run marathons. <laughs> like if you told a person from the 1800s uh, about a marathon, they would think you're crazy. And um, it's because like, I think we have this biological craving for hard things in a very weird way. Um, and You know, I think that the more we're able to get our dopamine from things that are hard instead of things that are easy, um, the better life we live. And I think that uh, if you chase pleasure, you're going to get pain. And if you chase pain, (laughs) you're going to get pleasure. It's this weird pathway in the the brain that that is uh, connected in a super strange way. Yeah, because growth is it comes from failure, right? Mm -hmm. Like it comes from doing something wrong and learning it, learning to do it the right way. And there's no bigger, that dopamine hit is so much more than like you said, just like going and like listening and thinking like, you know, like it's like they say, like saying the affirmations in the mirror makes you feel good. But unless you take action on them, it will, it will never feel as good as when you take action on those affirmations and actually start to see it come to life and it's like a lot of people i get the vibe that that seeing it on instagram seeing it on all these different platforms is like good enough for them in reality and they think it's moving them forward 
but like they talk about you know layering paint like that's such a thin layer of paint compared to like actually going out and taking action on that information that you are consuming and then like that is such a much much more thick layer of paint and like the whole effect of it you know you probably positively impact more people you probably you know you grow more mentally and spiritually and like you believe in yourself so much more now than just saying you're going to do it saying you're going to do it having the positive thoughts and then just like sitting around waiting for it to to magically happen you know so true and i like alex ramosi has the quote um you don't get confident from screaming affirmations in the mirror you get confident by having a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are and um Mm. you gotta just do the thing it's it always just comes down to doing the thing and no amount of like ice baths and um, meditation and journaling and affirmations can get you there if that's your goal like if your goal is solely like all those things are great and all those things are good for you but if your goal is to achieve this certain goal the only thing that's going to get you to that goal is doing those steps on that path of that goal not all these side quests if you will <laughs> um you you just need to sit down and just do the thing and a lot of this stuff and a lot of i even found this f- for myself there was a point where i was listening to so many podcasts and reading these audio books and reading these books on self-improvement and it became like mental masturbation like it, it wasn't moving the needle for me it was I needed to take a step outside of uh, consumption and into creation. And um, I think a lot of people get stuck in that loop of they think that they're moving the dial, but really it's just mental masturbation. And now talking about like doing the damn thing, right? Like you're getting ready to my understanding to do, you said 31 podcasts in 30 days or 30 podcasts in 30 days. Can you talk to me about, kind of the, the path to getting to that decision and then, you know, kind of your thoughts on it before you're, you're getting rolling, like how you've been, how you've been approaching that, you know, from a mindset, from a mindset standpoint and really, you know, the why behind what, like why you want to do that. Yeah. So like, I think that, like I alluded to earlier, um, I think that I found a super unique opportunity that not a lot of people are capula- uh, capitalizing on when it comes to like Twitter spaces. Um, So I wanted to one, put that theory to the test and sit down and do these 31 Twitter spaces slash podcasts in 31 days. And one as an experiment, just see how it moves the needle. And two, Mm -hmm. I'm starting to become hyper aware of this freedom that I have right now. I just graduated college. I, I'm not in a relationship. I don't have kids. Uh, I, I really don't have a lot holding me back. And I really just want to try to make the most of this time before responsibilities start to stack up. And I don't have this type of time to do crazy things as I did in the past. And I, and I don't want to put that time to waste. Um, so one, I, I, I truly just see this as like a little experiment and see how it moves the needle. And two, you only have so much freedom in your life and, you're, and before you have all these people that you're responsible for and things that you're responsible for and things that you have to put above doing 31 podcasts in 31 days. I, I can't do this type of experiment so often in my life. And I'm in this perfect storm of graduating college. I don't have a job yet. I don't have a lot of things holding me back and I can really just go all in on something. And um, I'm excited for that prospect and and to see where that takes me. And in terms of how I'm preparing for it, I really just think like all the podcasts I've done in the past, have prepared me to sit down with almost anybody and like feel comfortable and confident in taking that conversation, a certain level of ability and skill of listening that I've only cultivated from doing the thing 75 times, I think maybe closer to 80 at this point. Um, Mm -hmm. 
so I try not to think of it too overwhelmed in into too I try not to get overwhelmed with it and really try to just think of it like one day at a time. And I think that perspective um is something that's gonna allow me to have a little bit more longevity with it and not fall fall into that trap of overwhelm um that I know is gonna come when I'm trying to post when I'm editing a podcast and I'm writing a Twitter thread on that podcast and then I have another one that night and then I got to repeat that in the, the next day. And um, mm-hmm. I think that just focusing on the day and letting the chips fall where they may is really uh, my strategy there. Cool. And I'm now I'm, I'm excited to ask you this question at the end of the 30 days too. Um, but free this, you know, what, goes into the is there a plan behind this to where like you've already scheduled out all of the guests and you've confirmed all the guests like what was the was there a preparation time uh that it took and like can you walk me through maybe some of the the action steps you took to where you know you feel confident really going after and pursuing this for the next month bro i think like 10 10 days ago um no not even Mm -hmm. i had 10 days till july for or uh yeah july 1st so only a few bit days back um i had like two podcasts for the month scheduled um uh, and i was like oh shit like i have a lot of work to do um but now i feel good i have the first 15 days scheduled and then i have um i think like four or five other ones scattered across the next two weeks after that um so there's definitely some gaps to fill uh, but I feel good going into that. I think that uh, I want to allow myself to have a little serendipity. Um, at times, I like when I'm doing these Twitter spaces, other creators join the Twitter space. And often, like, they'll, they'll shoot a follow or uh, send me a DM. And uh, I want to have the serendipity to allow uh, to have a spot for them <laughs> if, uh, if they – would be interested in doing a Twitter space. Um, so have to keep a, a few spots open towards the end just in case something like that happens. But um, yeah, ultimately scheduling, I'm like so disorganized. So I'm not the best person to take advice from in this regard. Um, but I think I've hit like the max amount of people you can DM on Twitter, like the past seven days in a row. <laughs> um, so just hammering away at DMs and, and hoping a few land. And I, I like to go for a super low conversion rate. Like if I if if I'm getting fifty percent of the people that I'm sending DMs to saying yes, like I'm I'm not aiming high enough. Um, so I, I really like to to kind of um, swing above my level and, and uh, hopefully land a few greats instead of landing a few good ones. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love that, man. Because in hindsight, you know, when you're when you're looking at it, you know, like you said, like it's one month out of your your life, and just how I like to think of things, like that is, you know, where if you take eighty five years of life, you're looking at, you know, a thousand over a thousand weeks, or sorry, over a thousand months. Sorry, that was a bad take, but yeah, over a thousand months, and it's like looking back, this is just going to be one period of time where you took a ton of consistent action and it probably will set you up for the next six months of success you know as far as what i'm hoping for um for you on that on that end of it so i think that's really cool because a lot of people are like oh i don't have a month to to do that and i don't have time to plan that and i don't have to do this but if you look at it from the long-term game like it is such a minute part of your of your journey that could have such a great impact and like people just in my opinion, totally underestimate that. Absolutely. And I think we, we, we don't realize like in hindsight, we, we don't realize the difficulties like the, the pain goes away faster than the enjoyment. And a lot of things that were super hard in the moment in hindsight don't seem too bad. And uh, keeping that perspective when you're in that situation, that sucks. And you're doing all this work. Um, I think you you remember the good 
far longer than you remember the bad. So just keeping that in mind uh, has been super helpful for me and definitely a perspective that I will take in to this next month. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. Yeah, so we'll start to we'll start to uh, close this up, you know, here pretty shortly. But I do like to kind of my one question I like to throw at people. What's one question you have for the host? If there is, I ask all my all my podcast guests this question to usually to start the conversation. Um, if there's one concept, one idea, something that's had the biggest impact on you, what would you say that? that is uh i mean i think this is a the podcast is a living breathing example of what i've decided to take the most seriously and it's it's literally taking everything day by day you know ultimately i'd like to get to a place where it's moment by moment um but yeah the biggest impact on me is just the when i heard the piece of advice where it's like A, the best people, you know, work on themselves 99% of the time and whoever's around them while they're in that state of mind, working on themselves, being the best version of themselves is supposed to be there. So first it was hearing that. And then my, where where I heard that and my dilemma was like, okay, how, what can I do consistently enough to where I feel like I'm putting my best, the best version of myself out there. And I know I'm growing that person. Like I'm learning more and more. So I was like, a podcast and then you know the name just kind of tied into it i was like if you're gonna be called the weekly prophet then you have to put out an episode every single week like there's nothing that screams consistency that screams day by day eventually i would like to get to you know the post per day so it's like everybody sees the the daily post and we'll get there you know especially tying into next year but yeah the biggest um the whole thing with that was just you know, the biggest piece of advice was like, if you really take things day by day and you really focus on, you know, stacking the small wins. And if you don't know what those small wins are going to be, it was like, that taught me to start planning my day. out. I was like, if I know I want to take tomorrow, you know, moment by moment, day by day, let me look at what I already know is going to be in the calendar or already non-negotiably need to do and put those things in the calendar as much in advance as I can. And then just waking up, looking at it and being like, okay, I'm going to do these five to 10 things and be a hundred percent present in each of those meetings and each of those podcasts and each of those sales calls. And then I'm just going to see what, what else happens the rest of the day. And it was like, that has allowed me purely to take everything day by day. So yeah, that would be hundred percent my biggest takeaway. It's not some big, like never give up type thing. It's just Mm -hmm. purely simple. How can you, if you know, you should take things day by day, how can you cultivate that and know that you're going to make that promise to yourself every day? And it was like launch a podcast, record, drop an episode a week, you know, try to drop a clip per day and show the journey on a literally a daily basis. I know we've talked about this and it's kind of another rabbit hole we can go down there, but like there's so many podcasters out there aside from ourselves that like wait till they've sold the multi-million dollar company. They wait till they're making 50K a month until they start talking about it, until they start, you know, giving that piece of advice on it. And my thing was like, there's not enough people that are in the thick of the journey showcasing what it's really like, because everyone that's listening, like we talked about to the Rogans of the world, to the Stephen Bartlett's of the world, to the Chris Williamson's of the world. It's like, they get the idea in their head that they're going to get there tomorrow. And that those people, they like forget that the only reason that those people have that influence over them is because they took everything day by day, moment by moment, and didn't let the, the outside distractions really get to them. Truth. A lot, a lot of truth, and just breaking things down. And I think that like things seem overwhelming, but the more we're able to break them down in that small way that you described, the um, the easier they become, and the more approachable they become. So I think it's just great advice for people to start getting moving in the right direction. And if you you think big, it, it's hard to start taking actions towards those things. So breaking it down in that small way day by day is is the way to do it cool man and my final my final question for you obviously this has been it's been a lot of fun um i am curious what do you think is i don't know which question i'll ask i'm debated between how do you want to be remembered and there was another question where it's like if 20 
let's call it 25 year old Ryan is talking to 22 year old Ryan. What I like that one better. If 25 year old Ryan is talking to 22 year old Ryan, what piece of advice do you think he's going to, he would give him right now? Make it easy on yourself. Um, Interesting. I think that like, I, I have a tendency to be like, okay, I need to do a clip a day and I need to tweet every single day and I need to be doing two threads a week and I need to be doing all these things. Um, when in reality, if, if I'm able to keep it simple and keep it easy, I'm able, able to keep it sustainable. And the more I'm able to keep it sustainable, the longer I'm able to play this game. And I think the longer I'm able to play this game, the more likely I am to get lucky. And I think that's the only secret is playing the game long enough um, to have that one episode that explodes or to have that one thing that you find that becomes your pocket of greatness. Um, so I think it would just be make it easy on your, make it easy enough on yourself that you could play this game for a long time. 100%. And now this one that just came to mind, it's a really good one to wrap up on. If somebody's made it this far in the podcast, give them one reason based on the conversation we've had today that they should share it with someone else who should they share like what type of person should they share our conversation today with Ooh. like first thing that comes to mind i think somebody one who's interested in creating content um maybe someone who's thinking about starting a podcast thinking about uh doing a pursuit like this or then or someone who they think's been on this self improvement path for a while and doesn't and they're feeling ready to step outside of consumption and into creation but don't really know the direction they want to take things in what what would your answer to that question be you really you, <laughs> you definitely nailed it um but i would definitely i would say this would be a great podcast to kind of to show someone you know kind of focus on the idea we talked about or i talked about a couple minutes ago um, if you know someone that's in the process that wants to get, like you said, that may, maybe is stuff like has a lot of talent, a lot of great ideas, and is just struggling with certain, um, like they, they're struggling to, you know, maybe they have expectations of what it's supposed to look like and they want more of a perspective on, you know, what it's like in the midst of the journey. I think this would be a great episode to, to share because I think we've really hit it step by step, you know, from the beginning of your podcast journey, you know, down to the like the insecurities and why you did it. And then also, you know, what you learned from these successful people, you know, we showcased a lot of cool stories about guests you've had and then, you know, how your perspective has evolved. I think you did a really good job at kind of showcasing, you know, what like how your thought process has changed and the certain things you took you know, to eradicate some of those insecurities and to give yourself more self-confidence. So I think to anyone in the journey who's lacking some sort of self-confidence but has a lot of great ideas, um, definitely listen to this episode and keep tapping in with me and uh, me and Ryan because I know the guests that we're going to continue to have on the show um, will provide a lot, of, a lot of great value to that. So um, thank you so much, man. This was, this was super cool. I'm glad we, we took it the whole hour and a half plus um, and to everyone who tapped in on the live, can't thank you enough. You can find this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and my, my personal YouTube channel. And of course, Ryan, kind of fill us in. You know, obviously the Twitter spaces are going to be big, um, but where can our guests connect, or sorry, our, our listeners connect with you for the, the remainder of, you know, your whole process and your whole journey? Yeah, thank you guys for listening. Um, appreciate you both. And... Uh, yeah, I'm doing a Twitter space every day in July, so keep an eye out for that podcast at the Alchemist Library up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys listening. Jack, I appreciate you asking great questions, and um, thought it was a great, great show today. I appreciate you. Yeah, no, 100%. Thank you. Thank you, brother. We will, uh, we will end this now and i do um i love the stanley who tapped in on here um showing what he learned about the about the podcast that's that's awesome man i really appreciate you you sharing that insight that shows you firsthand what you were talking about with these twitter spaces it's really it's really cool to see the audience 
share their perspective on what we're saying um, in addition to, you know, actually taking the time to, to listen to us. So. Absolutely. All right, brother. Peace. All right. All right peace.